Hi there, I am Sarah Rodman, the TV editor here at the Los Angeles Times, and thank you so much for joining us. And we are so excited today to have with us on our red couch, Miss Susan Sarandon, the fabulous, talented, funny, and beautiful Oscar-winning actress. Thank, thank you, you so much for joining us Thanks today. For First of all, um, I, I loved Feud, as many, many people did. And I know that you would have been approached over the years multiple times about portraying Betty Davis that you had narrated a documentary about her also, correct? Mm -hmm. And so part of the appeal for you was being able to really stretch out in eight hours of doing yeah, this Yeah, I mean, project. when I, a, a lot of different scripts, she, <laughs> she had, well, originally she um, approached me through a director when I was a kid, and her yeah. daughter had just written a horrible book. Oh, yeah. And she said she wanted me to play her, but they, there was no script, and I didn't have the wherewithal uh, to figure out how to make that happen. So that would have been the early days. Then there were a number of, <laughs> she went to the Hamptons once when she was older, and stayed with the family to get an award and didn't leave for months. <laughs> Disrupted the entire family, so that was a script that came to me. Then there were a couple of plays that involved, one that involved Joan. So it's been kind of following me. And then Ryan, originally, it was a film. Mm -hmm. And when I read it, I just said, it's just kind of a one joke thing, you know, they're bitchy. And, but what's interesting is the last line, if only, you know, we could have been friends or whatever that is, if mm -hmm. you mean all this time we could have been friends. I said, that's interesting to me. Why, you know, if women band together, they're so powerful and what a shame that this happened. So years later, he came and he said it was going to be all these episodes and I thought how can he stretch that out and then he said well we're gonna look at it in the context of Hollywood and tell that story and has it changed and what about women and, and then it started to get much more interesting mm -hmm. and uh, and though we didn't have anything but the pilot originally when I had to commit I talked to Jessica and I just decided to jump in and and finally do her. <laughs> <laughs> That's the role finally. that you were destined to play. Yeah. And obviously you hadn't worked with Jessica before, but you knew her. Yeah, we're East Coast gals and we've run into each other a lot and we, you know, ha have, I I'd spent a little bit of time with my family, with her family in Mexico and, you know, you survive in this business long enough and the ones that are left standing you kind of feel bonded with and, and that certainly was Jessica. And it's interesting because you are, end up in these roles where people are in a feud, and there's so much venom and vitriol going back and forth between so much these. Pain. And well, I was going to say they were so wounded yeah. as people, and that denouement of they could have been friends. They had so much in common, but I'm wondering if in between takes, because there was so much sort of it was so fraught that with that amazing cast, you were doing some laughing and hugging <laughs> to sort yeah, of like I mean, tamp the, that I think down. in the beginning. Well, I could speak for myself, but, but I know Jess, we would turn to each other and say, are we just doing like a series of memes? You know, what's going on here? Because <laughs> we were so afraid of being overpowered by the kind of cliche of who these women were, especially Betty Davis, who's been imitated so drastically. Um, so how could we make that live? And so I think we focused on that even, you know, making the scenes work rather than whatever the animosity was. but. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's always fun to fight when it's not real, you know, then all those things you wish you could be bitchy enough to say is really so much more fun being hooked than Peter Pan. So, um, <laughs> yeah, but I think initially, I know I was terrified for at least five weeks. I couldn't get the fear fun ratio in my favor, just listening to the dialect coach trying to get that very idiosyncratic pattern mm -hmm. down and she always chose to emphasize the weirdest words in every <laughs> sentence and you know I so I I, I didn't really f I like to have a good time I mean I love the collaboration of of film and TV of, I mean that for me is everything and uh, I come from a large family and I like to recreate that so for me to be uncomfortable even though I knew I was doing it because I wanted to be outside of my comfort zone it was just so much more uncomfortable than I had anticipated and uh, in the beginning, when Ryan asked me, I said, I'm just really scared. I, I just am really scared. And he said, well, I'm scared, too. And that, for some reason, I found that I found it very consoling. I don't know why that made me feel at ease, that he was terrified also. Right, exactly. But, it could have had the opposite effect. Yeah, I, I just was like, oh, OK. <laughs> then let's do it, you know. And, uh, and it together. ended up being really fun eventually, long, 
Yes, and I fractured my foot, so I was in a boot for about seven weeks of the whole thing. But luckily, her yes. walk was like a truck driver, so it didn't matter. <laughs> she did have a really yeah. specific gait. That and was I was doing the Exit to King, the UNESCO <laughs> play that I did on Broadway. I really couldn't figure out the queen. I just was having the hardest time, and I, coincidentally, looked at her movies where she played the queen, and she walks like a truck driver. And I thought, okay, and I wore boots and walk like a truck driver, and for some reason that helped me enormously. Yeah, it's an ownership walk. I <laughs> guess, you know, and I guess I just am not very queenly, also is probably right. It's But my I fault. mean, that, that is, brings up a good question, though, that because there were so many idi idiosyncratic things about her, her look, her the way she walked, the way she talked, was there a specific thing that unlocked it for you? Well, that's a good question. Or? Oh, well, the, I mean, Lou was just amazing what she did with the wardrobe. We created, recreated so much, you know, the dress from All About Eve, exactly. I mean, so many things that she found and even painted the, the, uh, the, the fabric to look like it, and that certainly helped. And I shaved my head. Uh, she had a very wide forehead, mm -hmm. and I don't. And so um, with the wigs and everything, shaving it to make it wider and more straight across, I think, helped a little bit mm -hmm. um, and of course when you can hide behind that white makeup <laughs> that was those wigs. I was so happy to get rid of that event I mean at first it was really fun and then after a while because you just can't get it off right and I did my own makeup for that because she did her own makeup for that and uh, uh, you know that that was a nice moment in the beginning to kind of latch on to but um, I don't know I think just a combination of listening and mm -hmm. and uh, Ryan actually does a really good Betty Davis, so he would <laughs> jump in every now and then. And a few line readings that you didn't mind because they were no, perfect. He would, I would go, okay, yeah, I get that. That's, yeah, you're Well, right. and he knew her a little bit. He actually wrote some very lovely things about her uh, after she passed away, and before she passed away, back in his days as a newspaper writer. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering if he shared any oh, insight. Oh, over and over and over and over, yes. <laughs> More than you needed. No, 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 I loved hearing it, but he, I mean, he didn't see her often, but he had a very long first experience, I think like a five hour visit mm -hmm. it turned into. And and uh, there are a lot of people that had little bits and pieces, and of course there were so many books written. And though I knew her films and appreciated her films, I had never seen her television appearances. And you learn a lot. I mean, I, it took, to be able to talk without a cigarette took me a while because she, she right just, to the end. right to the end, right just to the defiantly end. held that cigarette and had that cigarette. And uh, so I, all the talk shows, the, the foreign film festivals, uh, what's my line, I mean, there was a lot of things mm. to kind of try to get the essence of her rather than imitate her because I, I don't think the impression that we have of Betty Davis is it was not a complete right. one, you know, and so it was kind of nice to be able to to let people into a little bit of, of the other part of her. And you also, Ryan has been doing this with a number of his projects, and he did this with Feud as well, that you had a lot of women on the set as directors, as crew Half people. Half of them. That was the other seductive thing. He said, I'm going to start this program, and we're going to have a very diverse set, and we're going to have half of them directed by women. And that was, I, I actually had done my last three or four films directed by women. The Meddler was, you know, Marilyn was a woman. Um, but I like that intention. Mm -hmm. And for instance, Helen Hunt just turned out to be mm -hmm. amazing as a director, just killer director. And I never would have known that. I admire her as a person and as an actor, but I. Her dad was a director too, yeah, I Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so chip off the old block yeah. there. And I like that, you know, looking back over the work that you've done, I mean, you've done a lot of sort of women-centric films, which is Eastwick and The Banger Sisters and Thelma and Louise. I mean, this is clearly a milieu that interests you. Oh, I think most women would jump at the chance to be able to work with other women. It's just that the imagination is a little lacking in the studio system. And even after Thelma and Louise, everyone thought that there was just going to be tons, because it made so much money, that there right. would be tons of movies uh, with women as a central figure and now being an older woman you know it's hard, even harder to find and uh, but you know they're just proportionately are but you know a lot of these guys movies are not that good so do we really want quantity or quality that's well, what I say you it's know? the question we need to keep asking but yeah. it's interesting because 
with the benefit of hindsight, there are so many things watching this show where you're just like, oh God, I can't believe that's still exactly the same mm. way. The sort of death by a thousand cuts of the humiliation and the indignities of you know what you look like and how old you are. And, but then there are things that have in fact gotten better. So, I mean, was it hard to sort of look back and realize that there are many things that are still not different? I always look forward, I don't look back. And I feel that women, the group just ahead of me definitely saw other women as enemies because the power base at that time was definitely masculine. I think that has shifted. There are more women that are in positions of power within the industry or actors that are women that are starting their own projects. I mean, Dead Man Walking was something I found mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and put together. And I think that it, that has continued and there's a lot of really strong female producers and directors, of course. But mm -hmm. um, So I think that, uh, I don't know, I, I've never seen an example in my career of women going after other women except maybe on the housewife shows or something right. where that's encouraged because right. that's kind of what they do. That's part uh, of the show. You know, <laughs> that is what they do. And, and, and certainly if you, if you can't come up with a plot, getting people drunk and turning them against each other for absolutely no reason works. Yes. Um, but we're better than that, and I think that there's a way to, uh, uh, you know, find stories about women. I mean, Hidden Figures I just saw on the plane, that's a fabulous story, you know, and, and more and more, um, they don't even have to be biopics. I mean, there's a lot of right. just fun movies. I'm about to do the sequel to Bad Moms. And just doing the read-through with all of those women was so much fun. And Goldie That's Hawn and I, fun. you know, when we worked together, that was really great. So I think all women would love to, to have an opportunity to work more often with women. And, and the idea in the old days that there's only, you know, one woman per film. Right. Or if there's two, they automatically hate each other, especially if one's older and one's younger. Mm -hmm. you, you know, but a good, a good story can have a lot of women. It can have only women. Yeah, it could have only women, <laughs> definitely. We have no problem with that whatsoever. Yeah. And let's talk just for a minute about this amazing cast that Ryan assembled. There is not a weak link in this no. bunch. And I can't imagine how much Stanley Tucci, Alfred Molina. Well, it's so freeing to Davis. have people that are really strong um, that you can be your strongest with and who take make you better. Because that's what happens if you're in a scene with people that are prepared and talented and brave. I mean, Stanley and uh, Tucci, and who I work with a few times before and as a director, I adore. But to actually, and I wish I'd been able to be in more scenes with him, and Judy Davis is just insane. So and good. she would make us laugh so hard. And she's so brave, you know, and it makes you braver. And that's what I love about the business is when you surprise yourself because you're in a situation with someone who surprises you, then it really is yeah. like flying, and that's, that's the most fun, yeah. And uh, I like that it, it's an issue that was addressed in the show, but I love that this has changed so much, that sort of wall of snobbery has come down between film and television, that that is not an, oh, yeah. an issue at all, that it's not about platform, it's about storytelling. And that I've, definitely has changed in a which major, is major way, and it seems like things get up much faster too on TV, and and uh, there's just so many platforms, and 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 because you're not, you can go after a specific um, demographic, you don't have to please everybody, right? And so then it gets really interesting. Then the voice can be very particular and and, and riskier. And even by speaking to a specific audience, you end up speaking to everyone. I One mean, would hope, but yeah, you know, when you're wonderful. selling something. Yes. <laughs> the good thing about Ryan, you know, I knew that uh, I had backed out of something else for TV at one point because it be before it started because it became clear that I was getting one thing from the director, producer, and the powers that be mm -hmm. suddenly at the 11th hour, like, wait, what's going on? And I realized that either he hadn't been communicating it or they didn't care that he'd been communicating. With Ryan, you know that it's not really going to be about committee. I mean that he has a vision and mm -hmm. he, he's the, you know, pretty much the final word and so for better or worse, you know, you're going to get something that it has a, a pretty uh, sol solid perspective and that is really important. It has too. a real voice too. Yeah. And, uh, and he, you know Jessica and Angela Bassett and Kathy Bates and Sarah Paulson. He has created the sort of Ryan Murphy repertory company. And now that you have joined it, would you imagine working with him again sure, in the future? Sure. I mean, he's very loyal, and I feel very loyal to him. Um, 
I, absolutely, and I, I, you know, or, or if I had a project that I was hoping to, that would could turn into a, a series, I would consider taking it to him too, because he's got it figured out for sure. He really does. He's doing a good job. Now, I wanted to ask, if they ever make a movie of your life, who would you like to see play you? And I'm wondering if um, Keenan Shipka might be a good a choice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking of Tom Hardy actually. <laughs> Tom Hardy can I love do Tom anything. Hardy. <laughs> I would like him to be me. All right. I would like to be him. <laughs> but I think he could do just about anything. I think he can too. And I th think in probably a few years, maybe he'd have to wait a little longer, but he'll exactly. be around, I'm sure. But I think being Tom Hardy is probably a pretty good thing now. All right, we are going to take some questions from Twitter and elsewhere. Tia on Twitter would like to ask you, what was the most difficult thing about becoming Betty Davis? I, th I think that the... Um, I'm very at ease doing a southern accent. I'm kind of sloppy and slow. She was so precise. Again, so idiosyncratic in what words she uh, stressed. I, it's not hard to drop the R's or to come up with, right. the, with that, but the pattern of her was so odd. Mm -hmm. um, so that I, I, it took a long time before that felt in any way natural <laughs> for me. So I think I conquering that, the rhythm, the rhythm of it more than even the way that she spoke. Paula on Twitter, I hope I'm saying that right, Paula. Um, if you could ask Betty Davis one question, what would it be? Oh. If she was here to answer a question for what you. What a great, I guess I'd ask her if she did have any regrets. I bet she'd say no. Even if she did. Even if she did. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, think I, I would ask her just quietly off in the corner, just tell me, is there anything I should like watch out for? Is there anything if you had a do-over, what would it be? But she, there was a section, I don't think it got into the final cup where she's talking about loving and she says, you know, uh, I would rather take a chance on something that I know is probably going to end than live my life being protective or being careful in mm -hmm. terms of her love life. And I thought that was really cool because uh, so much is stressed about her career Right. Um, but she loved being in love, and she said she did her best work when she was in love. Mm -hmm. So that meant sometimes the director, sometimes the co-star, right. sometimes a surfer, a musician, whatever. But um, and Hedda actually, Hedda actually said that, and I, I read a quote of hers where she said that was true. Mm -hmm. That Betty really loved to be in love. Who doesn't love to be? In yeah. Love? Well, if you could have a do-over, now you've brought that question to my mind, what would you do over? I would do all my mistakes faster. <laughs> Good thinking. Because I think they all taught me something, but they just, some of them went on way too long. <laughs> yes, I think we know that feeling. Uh, Amanda on Twitter asked, this year marks the 30th anniversary for the Witches of Eastwick, which I didn't Whoa. realize. Will there Another be, anniversary. Will there be a reunion? Oh, I don't know. I saw Michelle recently. Every now and then I talked to Cher. I did, Jessica and I went to see Nicholson when I said we have to go see him since we're together and we tried to get Michelle and she was in town didn't work out so I think maybe those kind of reunions I don't think anybody would know what to do with that plot at this point yeah. we could resurrect the wigs but I don't think we could <laughs> I don't know what the plot would be and I don't know that Jack I think Jack maybe he was talking about maybe he was it would take a lot to get him out of the house so you would have, but the gals might. He really loves Michelle. Too. Right. But maybe we don't need her. Maybe we just need the witches. Maybe and we do. And we need Tom Hardy playing <laughs> the male character this yeah. time. All right. Let's All put right, that Tom. in the universe. All right. Multiple people wanted to know if you were interested in doing um, another famous Hollywood feud. If a, a few years down the road, Ryan wanted to do another feud. Um, I don't know who, what that With would be. With Miriam Hopkins, someone suggests. Oh. I guess it would be Betty again. Betty and Miriam Hopkins? Hmm. I don't know anything about that. I, I mean, I don't want to be specializing in feuds, but um, <laughs> I, I really honestly don't know anything about that feud. All right, well then the answer would probably be no then. Um, All right, we are about to wrap up, so we have five quick questions that we ask everybody at the end that we call the lightning round. Oh, don't God. think about okay. it. Just answer, Just answer right answer off the and then go viral round. with your big mistake. Yes, exactly. I but got it. It'll, it'll, it won't be a big mistake. There won't be, there are no mistakes here. There are no wrong answers. Yeah. What was the last show you binge watched? Oh, the, um, the night. The night of. No. no. Oh, I did binge watch okay. that, but the one after that was the, not the night porter. That was a long time. 
The night what? The night manager. Yes, I watched that. That was really great. And then I uh, and I also binge watched the the one with uh, Ribisi. What was that one called? Oh, Sneaky Pete. Like Sneaky Pete because with Brian Cranston. Uh, yeah, because uh, one of our Allison was in it, so I wanted to see her. Not in it enough, but I guess those those were. Yeah. And that's coming back too. Now, what what classic show would you have loved to have been had a role on? Classic show meaning like television. Mary Tyler Moore oh, or you like know, I just... don't watch television. I'm I'm culturally really. The bar is really low. I don't. I hardly ever. Something has to be. I don't have a TV. I haven't had one for years. So I have my iPad, and someone mm. has to load it for me, <laughs> and then then I watch it. That's about the speed I operate at. So I'm kind of don't have very many. Didn't watch shows growing up. Right, you were working. Well, I, it wasn't that, yeah, I don't know. I never got in the habit as a kid. Mm -hmm. I'm the oldest of nine, and I don't, I guess there was just too much going on. I well, never, you were taking care of the other eight. Yeah, I was definitely. That right. was like a TV series, actually. I bet it would have been a good question. All right, yeah. my advice then is to go back and watch the Mary Tyler Moore show then, because I, okay. I think you would love it. Okay. Uh, what genre that you have not done, although I feel like you've pretty much covered everything, would you like to do? Have you ever done a straight musical? I know you did Rocky IV. Oh my God, but... that's never going to happen. <laughs> oh my God. I have sung so many times badly in so many things, and I'm so uncomfortable. When Ryan showed me the film of her singing Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, I was like, that's not funny. I'm not doing that. And he was like, no, it's great. And I said, no, it isn't. It's, she's off. It's terrible. I, it took me like three times to be off that often and to do it exactly the way mm. she was doing it. Uh, the Rocky Horror Show I did just to get over my phobia of singing. And I definitely, I've been offered musicals. I don't know what they're thinking. <laughs> I mean, that is not going to happen. Definitely not a musical. No, though. not a musical. All right, and finally, uh, what was your first acting job, and what did you learn on that job that you're still using now? Um, it was Joe. I was 20 years old. And it was a big hit. And I, um, I wore my own clothing, which got shot up. I did my own makeup, which was ridiculous. And um, I stepped over the sound man to get into a bathtub naked while he was next to the tub with a boom mic. That was totally avoidable. Oh my God. So none of those things are going to happen again. I'm not shooting up my own clothing. Maybe I'd do my own makeup, but I learned a lot. And I learned that it was fun because I got to trash, I had no acting experience, and I got to have a freak out on some undesignated drug and trash in one take a store. And after I was finished with that, I thought, well, this is fun. I could do this. <laughs> I'll do that again. Right. And that's kind of what led to the whole thing. And after about 10 years of working, I thought, I guess this is what I do. Yeah, and you do it very well. Thank and you. we are so grateful that thank you were you. here today. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you all for joining us as well. And join us again. There will be more chats to come.